In this lesson, we're going to look at the backing vocal track or backing vocal one um, of the La 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 Task 1A. So there's a couple of things you need to look at on the score. The first thing is if you look at the, the clef, you're going to notice this little A underneath. This is basically telling you that although it's written in this position here, which is the equivalent of F sharp 3, it's actually an octave lower. Okay, so these two these two notes and all the others are actually an octave lower in pitch. This is going to be important. In order to get the full marks for pitch and rhythm, you do have to make sure you get the right octave. You will lose marks if they are the wrong octave. If it doesn't sound the same octave um, as the actual score, you will lose marks there. So it's important to note that this eight is asking you to bring it down an octave, okay? So everything written should be an octave lower. As you can see from the piano roll, I've actually dropped mine down. So whereas it should been where it should have been here on F sharp three is now F sharp two, and the higher note is F sharp three. The other thing about the score is these are octave spreads, okay? So you've got two notes, but they are always an octave above. So just to make it easier for yourself reading, they're just playing the notes in octaves and they are the oo sound. So this particular backing vocal is the oo sound. You're going to find this part in the pre-choruses and they are identical. Some of the shaping you're going to need to, to kind of consider is once again, you've got this really pulled and pushed kind of um, pattern where it's slightly before the beat. So it's giving it that kind of rigid feel again. And you need to hear this for yourself, of course. So once you input your notes, if you if you play them in, you're obviously going to be at a massive advantage. But if you are typing them in, you will need to kind of look at the shape of these notes. And as you can see from mine, I've just put them slightly before the, the beat, just to kind of make that emphasis and make it more rigid and kind of pushing and pulling against the beat. I will probably reshape this even further. I've just done a blanket kind of pulling them off the beat and it seems, seems to have worked. The other thing that I've done is if you notice, I have left a gap. There, there does seem to be a bit of a lead in with the attack and a lead out with the release. So I've just kind of made them ever so slightly shorter to kind of emphasize that point. These parts do only happen in two places, so it's fairly easy and it's a direct copy. So feel free to kind of copy and paste these these into position that should work very nicely. As you can see, I've left, I've actually made the container a bar bigger just to include this this kind of bit before the actual grid reference. If you don't do that, it will cut the first note off. Okay. So the next thing we need to look at is what kind of position have we got for this particular sound? I've put it over in the left speaker about minus 18. This is also kind of relevant to vocalization 2 where I put that in the right speaker plus 18. Backing vocals traditionally tend to only be in one one ear and they, they, tend, they tend not to be in the center because it detracts from what the main vocal is doing. So just be aware that it does have to go off to one side. Um, what you found traditionally in kind of more, more commercial music is the backing vocals will all be at the same position. But the way I'm hearing these is this one is slightly off to the left, this one is slightly off to the right, and this vocalization one has this big spread where it seems to be just ever so slightly bouncing bouncing off both speakers. But neither one is taking up that, that main kind of center frequency. It's leaving the space for the main vocal. So back to my main vocal, I've dropped it in the mix ever so slightly, um, and I've made it more punchy. So the, the actual sound that I've gone for, unfortunately I couldn't find an oo sound in Logic. Now when I used to use Cubase, Hallion had some fantastic oo sounds, and, and they were definitely a go-to. So if you're, um, if you're using Cubase for this particular task, you're going to have a bit of an advantage, okay? I've used a legacy here, but you'll find the same instruments in in the orchestral part as well. So if you scan through to the orchestral and then keep going through to the choirs and then you're going to find this this one here, Gregorian Ensemble. Okay, and that's one I've used. It's more of an R sound, so it's a bit, it's not completely right, but if you can find that nice oo sound, you're going to be head and tails above what I've got here. It's still good and it still works and it fits in the mix, but it's not completely to my liking. Some of the ways in which I've had to shape this in the ES2, sorry, the ESX24, ah, EXS24, I've had to shape the attack envelope and the release envelope 
just to kind of give it a, a bit more of a float in and a bit more of a float out just to kind of emphasize what the actual vocals are doing I don't think I've done anything else to that it was just mainly the attack getting that right took me a little bit of time let's have a listen see what we've got here then just to kind of show you what I've got and then I'll play it with the track to show you what they've got Once again, I have been looping this section. As you can see, I've, I've put this on loop, and I do keep comparing and contrasting it. It took me quite a long time to kind of work out how big they were. At one point, I thought maybe I'll try some overlapping until we get some slides into the next note. But I've decided to go for this more staccato pattern, just so just staccato pattern, just to make sure we kind of get that phrasing absolutely right. And once again, you will have to do a lot of the shaping yourself. The notes aren't all at one pitch as well. Like I say, with the attack and release, you're kind of sliding into that, so that's taking care of a lot of that that note velocity um, because I haven't played these in I have used the function for this one so I've gone to the function MIDI transforms much like in one of my other lessons and gone to this random velocity and I've set the random velocity the maximum was something like 102 and the minimum was 95 I believe um, and that's given me this nice fluctuation to make it just slightly less kind of mechanical. I will probably do a little bit more as I said previously. So what they've got then, this is their part. There is catch fire. I can't find no silver lining. I don't mean to judge. Okay, and then back to my one. I'm gonna take this off solo this time. And once the main vocal comes in, you will find that that backing vocal will sit back a little bit more. At the moment, it sounds like it's really in your face and really full on, but it will sit back a bit more. The other thing I've done is turn up the reverb settings. When I get to doing the proper mixing for this task, I will rip out a lot of a lot of their kind of pre presets that they they use because it just makes it a bit messy. And I will I will look at the reverbs in more depth. But for now, I've just turn up the reverb settings on this. I've also temporarily put a 1k boost in to make that <laughs> to try and get that ooh sound out. Even though it's an R sound, putting the 1k boost has just kind of brought the brightness out ever so slightly and and made it shape a little bit more so it sounds more appropriate. Um, it is an R sound, so I haven't quite got the 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 shaping of the voice right, but. It's not too bad, and, and it will do for, for these purposes, and it will get you the marks. But if you can find the ooh, that would obviously be a lot better. Once again, all these parts will be in the screenshot, so you can have a look through my EXS24 settings and just have a go as a starting point, and then develop them from there. Okay, now it's your turn.